Hello, everyone. I've posted it myself here. It ends with Tell Mario they're ready to go. Me, they're gonna kill me. That was the end of it. So that's pretty dramatic, but kind of shows the uh, We're ready? importance of the space uh, today. All right. All right let's see if I'm requested, like requesting here to Mario. Hello, everyone. We're just hold on one minute. Jordan? I requested to speak. Uh, while I'm waiting for Jordan to come up, and I know everyone's waiting for jo James to uh, come up as well. Should I'm here. I'm requested to speak. Guy. I'm going to pin something at the top. I want you to all have a look at it. Still requesting. Oh, but this is Mario. I'm just yeah. using my other account to speak, uh, just for technical reasons. Uh, but let me pin the... It's a long tweet. You can all have a look at it while waiting for James to come up. I'm up. I'm requesting. Just pin it at the top. Hello there. Are you can, Mario? Can you hear me? Uh, so we'll need Jordan to fix the mic on his end. Hey Mario, can you hear me? Uh, James, you, yeah, your mic is good. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. This is James O'Keefe. Ah, uh, perfect. Uh, good to have you. Um, Great. Uh, well, the, the space is yours. I was just uh, uh, getting it ready. I know you had some technical issues, and Jordan's having technical issues as well. So we're all we're all having technical issues. Sort of it's really strange that every one of us is having technical issues right when we break the White House cybersecurity story. Literally, I'm, 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 I'm looking at my producer right now, and he's never seen this before in the location that we're in. He can't get on the Internet. It's wild. But thanks, Mario. Anything else before we start? Space is yours, man. I think a lot of people are worried after your long tweet that I pinned above um, that you posted 19 hours ago that went viral. Mm -hmm. So I was just going through that, but otherwise the space is yours. Thanks, man. All right. Well, hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to On the Inside with James O'Keefe. Uh, this week's episode, uh, we're going to go till 6 Eastern. Uh, we have some breaking news um, as part of a series. We have an investigation that just launched minutes ago featuring a top cybersecurity at the White House, a top cybersecurity official that was... Uh, caught on tape exposing, quote, what they cannot say publicly. And what's remarkable about the video is that the cybersecurity official was meeting with none other than yours truly in disguise. Um, so this is a remarkable story. And before I get to the story, that wasn't much of a disguise, by the way. I dyed my hair and put on some spectacles. We're going to get to that story. We're going to get to Jack Pasebic. We're going to get to a bunch of people. Uh, we're going to break that story. You may have seen Mario mentioned this, uh, the viral tweet last night, and I and I and I just want to make a few comments about this, and then I want to go to two young guys on the border who were kidnapped by the cartel, and then I'm going to go to the story. But um, people familiar with this story that just came out have been asking me questions about fear, and. Uh, projecting their fear onto me, asking me about, like, oh, shouldn't I be afraid, uh, and that sort of thing. And, and, I've, and I've taken the time to write a very thorough response to end all conversation about fear. I am tired of being asked this question um, about fear. So I, I, I wrote this response, and I'm going to read it again, and, and then I'm going to go to, um, I'm going to go to Anthony at Muckraker, and I'm going to go to, um, and I'm going to go to the other citizen journalist, Nick. But it's really, you know what, I'm not going to read it. You can read it yourself. Um, I built a great organization. Challenging Leviathan is hard. Leviathan doesn't like being challenged, but it's nearly impossible as that is. The enemy and its injustice is no longer what bothers me. That is not what bothers me anymore. And the thing that we're fighting is not the enemy and the government, but the people who do nothing. An enemy cannot betray you. Only people you think are good can do that, do that. It has been hell on earth for me to witness people go against everything they claim to believe and everything good and right in service of their love of money and power. I witness envy destroy people whose hearts I thought I knew. I've seen an unhealthy obsession with comfort and safety from countless others. Those weaknesses stand between us and what we're up against. Which leads me to the video that I just released of a cybersecurity official inside the White House. People say, aren't you afraid? No, I'm not afraid. I don't even think about that. And I'm not suicidal, but I'm also prepared to die. That doesn't mean I'm going to die. It means I'm prepared to die. And I'm indifferent to the outcome and, frankly, numb to the consequences of telling the truth. 
because I think it's important for all of us to adapt to this idea of faith over fear. And now the mission is to discover people who will go and do likewise. The video that we're going to talk about today was done by me. In other words, what type of clown show those boys running in the White House when they meet with James O'Keefe and divulge secrets? What, ex what is your excuse? What's your excuse to not do what I do? You better have a good one. I hear it from all of you. Well, I'm recognizable in my local community. Well, I, I mean, if, if James O'Keefe can go meet with a cybersecurity official in the White House, so can you in your community. Um, so anyways, the mission now is to discover other people whose principles are not for sale, who will do the right thing rather than talk about doing the right thing. I'm tired of seeing tens of thousands, I'm not exaggerating, tens of thousands of messages from people complaining to me about how bad things are, and then they do nothing. So I'm tired of it. And that's my, my reaction to the fear stuff. Let's get the fear stuff out of the way before we jump into the story. So here I stand, I can do no other. And has been, it has been said by Clarence Thomas in 91, quote, if they're going to kill me, they're going to kill me. Let's just get started. Let's inspire others to go do likewise. The truth is the truth. There's only one truth. There are only one set of facts. Now, uh, Anthony, Muckraker, are you there? Um, I don't know if Anthony's here, but I'm here. Josh, I'm his brother. I went with him, uh, like up through Central and South America, and I'm one of the guys who got kidnapped at the border. Well, well, let's get let's get Anthony in the queue, uh, Josh. You're the brother of uh, Anthony, correct? Yeah, yeah. If you and, watch the documentary, I'm, I'm the editor, and I also, yeah, got kidnapped. <laughs> so you were kidnapped. I mean, for, for those of you just joining the space, we're about to go to the White House tape, but I wanted to briefly highlight brothers Anthony and Josh of the Muckraker, the at Real Muckraker website. The only journalists I know, citizen journalists, that, that went all the way from South America to the United States and got kidnapped. And... Something really I want to ask you about was you were kidnapped and Anthony said, I'm sorry to you. Is that right? T tell me about that moment. Yeah, well, the whole trip was, I mean, funded by Anthony. You know, he's my big brother. I'm only 22 years old. It's not like, you know, I don't, I don't got all this funding, but I really wanted to come with him because I believe in, you know, the message we're spreading and I, I believe in the organization. So he obviously felt some responsibility um, over me, especially like as my big brother. And yeah, um, I mean, I don't know if, <laughs> who's seen the full documentary, but when we were in the truck, our hands were tied. Uh, there was a blindfold over my brother. There was a hood over my head. They were telling us not to look up. We were saying no more rear. And they kept, you know, it was just silence that we got in return, which was, you know, really terrifying. I was like, oh, God damn, they really put a bullet in my head. And yeah, he was just saying, sorry, dude. Like, I'm sorry for putting you in this situation. Anthony, uh, Anthony, you there, the brother of the brother of Josh, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. How you doing? I mean, thanks for being on. Just the, for those of you who don't know, just joining us, Anthony and, and Josh snuck into the country from South America, documented the whole thing. They're the personification of courage. And everyone's asking me, do I fear for my life with this White House cybersecurity thing? We just heard from your brother, Josh, Anthony, kidnapped by the cartel. Just take us to that moment when, once again, you were about to die, and but they didn't kill you. Well, no, we they we might have been. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was, you know, we, we weren't too sure. They, they, we reached a point where they, they just wouldn't talk to us. We were in the back of a car. They wouldn't answer us. Like I said, we were just like, we were just like, hey, man, no more rear. No more, like, I don't even know, or not, I guess that means not to die in Spanish. I don't really speak great Spanish. And um, they just weren't saying anything. They wouldn't answer us. And I told Josh, I'm sorry, man. But, you know, we weren't like, there was no tears. There was no begging and pleading. It was just matter of fact. What are you going to do? You just kind of have to be a man. And that was the situation, man. And then ultimately how it resolved, though, was we got driven out to a field. And also I'm going to resolve something right now because people keep call calling me a con man. And they say, how, how do you have all your footage if, if they smashed their electronics? So what happened was they drove us out to a field. They laid out our electronics. And, you know, they start screaming at us. They go, because they didn't believe that they had all of the, the our gear, which they didn't. We still had a GoPro camera, which had some vital footage on it. And actually had some of the last moments before we got taken by these people as we we're walking up the beach and that was in my bag so they didn't actually get that but um they eventually you know they, they're convinced they have all this stuff they lay out all of our electronics and they take out a crowbar and they smash every single thing to bits and pieces and then 
I knew when they were doing that, or at least I had a pretty strong feeling when they were doing that. I was like, this is, that's our punishment. They're going to let us go. Otherwise, they would have just killed us. Why, why, you know, why bother smashing our stuff and making us witness it, right? And they load us into a car. They basically said, never come back again. And they dropped us off at the port of entry, and that was that. And, um, but anyway, one thing I want to address is keep, people keep asking, if that happened, how did you make the documentary? Well, before we went into Mexico, uh, my, my two friends, Michael Yan and Ann Vanderstil, I met them in Guatemala. They took my footage back to the United States for me, everything before Mexico. And then everything in Mexico, the only footage that we had maintained from this first trip when we got kidnapped and our footage got destroyed was everything that was on the GoPro camera that they didn't find and only the footage that we had posted hey, on Twitter. Hey, Anthony, um, you know, and Josh, when you were in that moment, did you think you were going to die? Uh, I thought there was a pretty good chance. Definitely. What was running through your mind? What was running through your mind? Well, well okay. It depends at what point, because, like, the, there was a first initial truck that stopped us and basically said, you know, you got to get in our truck or else there's going to be issues for you, like, when you try crossing, like, the Rio Grande. And uh, they showed us that they were workers and that, you know, they didn't have weapons. So we got in. Uh, I, at that point, I, I, I didn't really know what was going on. I didn't think we were being kidnapped. Uh, but then this other dude gets in the truck, and then we get dropped off in another truck, and these guys all have AKs. And, you know, when at, at the point where I was pushed up against the truck, and, like, I couldn't see them, and there was about seven or eight guys all armed with assault rifles, and they were taking hostage photos of us, uh, tying up our hands. I thought there was, I don't know, it's, it's hard to put a percent, maybe 50% chance I was... I was listen, I mean, listen, guys, if you're those of you joining us, we are in spaces. We're about to cover the White House cybersecurity official caught on tape. I wanted to bring on brothers Anthony and Josh from Muckraker who almost got killed. I've never seen courage like you guys in all of my years. You're not working for a news network. We need more people like you. I look to work... I, I want to work alongside you, and the time is now, but we're, we're going to have to go to this White House story in a minute, and then I'm going to have to come bit, back to Nick Shirley later on. Um, but I guess I have to ask you, what is your message to, there's like 13,000 people on this right now, everyone listening, everyone's scared, they're always saying, well, James, are you fear for your life? And you guys are out there in the field almost getting killed by the cartel. So like, what is your message to all the people of this country who are scared and on the fence on the sideline. My message is this. It's the following. Um, if you look around and you, you, know, you take down the smoke screen, the country is quite literally on the verge of extinction. We are about to go the way of the dodo bird, and we are about to be absorbed into a globalist, essentially a one-world government. That's where it's happening, a post-human era. And so if that's not cool with you, if, if that's something that doesn't fly, fly with you or doesn't sit well with you, you got to do something about it, otherwise you're a coward, and there's nothing worse than reaching the age of an old man or a woman, you know, if you're that fortunate even, uh, and being in your deathbed as a coward. I mean, that's like dying a thousand times. I mean, what is it about you, Anthony, that made you, you're, you're just wired differently than most human beings, because otherwise other people would do this. What is it about you that brought you to, like, infiltrate this cartel-run operation? I mean, to me, it's it's quite fascinating, and I will also believe it to be one of the most important issues facing the United States today. You know, this unfettered invasion of our nation by every other nation state on the planet, essentially. And I think it's the biggest story of our day. And I hadn't seen anybody doing it the way that I thought it should be done, and that that was really it. And that's why I did it. It had to be done. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to have to go to this White House segment. Appreciate both of you. We're going if you can come on later. Closer to six, I want to get to you and Nick Shirley. But now, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining The Space live with James O'Keefe on the inside every Wednesday, 4 to 6 Eastern time. We're going to go to the videotape. Um, a lot of you know that we have American Swiper program. This video features a cybersecurity official in the White House breaking video, top White House cybersecurity official telling me in disguise Quote, they can't say it publicly, the White House wants to replace Kamala Harris and confirms President Joe Biden's mental decline. Quote, Biden is definitely slowing down. Uh, I think we have Jack Prasebic in the queue. If you want to get him in the team, if you want to get, uh, get him in the queue to get his reaction. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and read this to you and play some tape and then and get some of your reaction to it. Here we go. 
And by the way, this was in Washington, D.C. last Sunday uh, at a restaurant. In the exact he says he works at the White House, confirms he's pretty high up in the government. In the government? Yeah, I'm fairly high up. I'm good at keeping secrets. He's good at keeping secrets. Now, he also, we got his LinkedIn page. He manages two federal agencies, the State Department and USAID. In fact, he spent four years working at the State Department. I manage two federal agencies, the State Department and USAID. So when you say sec it's like security, like you're protecting... The networks of the federal agencies. He protects the networks of the federal agencies. You, can, you give all your information to us. The mission okay. is to protect yes. information. We, sir, we, we are like the president's voice. He's the president's so voice when we go into meetings. Discussing and, and promoting the president's priorities. Is he now, none of you know this guy's name. Charlie Crager is his name. Um, but what's remarkable is that, you know, the, the deep state, the administrative state, the nameless, faceless bureaucrats who are in there, regardless of who wins or loses, this is the personification of that. Um, it almost felt like there was a sort of Holy Spirit through this investigation. I want to talk to Nick and Anthony about that when we later on, because this was just too good to be true. Some people saying me uh, to commenting, you can go ahead and retweet this uh, or repost the space. They cannot believe that he did not recognize me. They say, I have someone saying, quote, I don't even know how I can believe that he didn't recognize you. I mean. He didn't recognize me. And if you think that's crazy, my name was actually James. I said I went to Rutgers and majored in journalism. So I was giving him, I was dropping hints, dropping clues. Nothing. He did not recognize me. Here we go. She's going to be the, the nominee. Yes. And she will be the vice president nominee. Yeah, I don't... There was a debate about removing her from the ticket, but sadly they didn't. She can't keep black to that. They quit on her in May. Now, a lot of the stuff we've heard... Kamala Harris cannot keep black staff. Uh, they, they quit on her in Moss. So a lot of Kamala Harris's African-American staffers do not like her. He goes into the leadership qualities of Kamala. He gets into detail about that later on. Confirms that Biden is slowing down. He's nodding his head. And I think that really, that, that what, you know, Undercover work is about getting people to disclose things they don't want to acknowledge publicly that they're doing. That's the whole point. If they're lying to you, they're lying to the American people. Now, you might say, I already know that. Well, listen, nothing that we expose is going to shock you, period. But the shocking thing is to get them on tape. That's the difference. People, half of the comments, nothing, this doesn't surprise me. This wasn't worth the hype. Well, nothing will ever surprise you. The surprising thing is we need to get them on tape. The tape is the accountability, guys. Here we go. I'm going to play one more minute, and I'm going to go to some reactions. But why not? Harris, she's not popular, but you can't remove the first black lady to be vice president. Quote, you can't remove the first black lady to be vice president from the goddamn presidential ticket, unquote, says the cybersecurity policy analyst and foreign affairs executive office of the president. From the goddamn presidential ticket. Like, what kind of message are you going to send to, like, the African-American voter? How would you spin that? People would be like, what the fuck? People would be like, what the fuck? What the fuck? How do you spin that? We can't do it. We want to remove her, but we can't because she's black and, the, and her staff quits in Moss. Like, she's a woman and she's multiracial. I think, I think that they're really concerned about that. But they won't say it. I guess if they say it publicly, Correct. Biden can't, say it publicly. can't say it publicly. Can't say it publicly. No, they can't say it publicly as dementia. Can't say publicly that we can't fire Kamala Harris because she's black. Why not? If there's one thing, one thing I know about, I know nothing about politics, but this is just so basic. If there's one thing that voters don't like, it's being lied to, right? That's just like the, 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 the law of non-contradiction, folks. Don't say A and at the same time say not A. You can't lie. And that's what the story is really about. So, they can't say it publicly. No, no, they've got to, they got to they say it privately. Nodding his head, they can't say it. They got to toe the line. They got to toe the line. This is this is this is um, <laughs> uh, quote. I'm good at keeping secrets. Proceeds to tell secrets. <laughs> so. I'm just, I'm just telling you what I've heard. Like, yep. You're just telling me the truth. Does it make sense? No. Does it make sense, says Charlie Crager, cybersecurity policy analyst. No. 
but that's what I've heard. Well, I'm starting to get anonymous messages, guys, I'm starting to get anonymous messages from haters. This is what happens. People send me anonymous, former colleagues, demons. You're destroying this man's life. He's just a civilian of no content. I'm reading uh, anonymous trolls. Nothing he says is revealing. You'll destroy his life. No, no, he's a high up official who works in the executive office of the White House and the public has a right to know what's going on. I disagree with you. All right, let's go to some reactions and then we'll go to, um, I guess Jack Pasebeck is in, is in, uh, is waiting, but let's go to, um, first let's go to, hey Jim, Paff, you there? I sure am. Hey Jim, you were a chief of staff for Congressman, was it Hules Camp? Um, Hules Camp in Mass. And you're, you're right in the swamp, although um, you work for probably some of the more honorable people, at least as far as I'm concerned, but what is your reaction to this tape? Listen, it, one, I think, as you said, nothing surprising. It's just that, you know, we're in that typical Washington way of thinking where even the obvious will not be either admitted to or discussed. And, and that's, that's the thing. When the American people so often know the, the outrageousness of what's happening in Washington on both sides of the aisle, and the people there will never admit it because they they want to play this slide if they can and they don't you always get by with it they want to play this slide of hand game to get out of the obvious bad that they are perpetuating on the people and this is a very very bad situation when you've got a president in the kind of shape mentally that Joe Biden is, and, and we don't know precisely what that is, but it's obvious. So there's a sort of Jim, you're you're if you're just joining the space, you're listening to us react to this tape of the cybersecurity official who says he's high up in the government, part of the administrative state. We're asking you to share this space, please. Just go to my X page and repost it. It's already getting close to fourteen thousand live listeners. So one of the, I think it's the top, second highest space ever we've done. Now, Jim, you're a chief of staff on Capitol Hill, and there is a, there is a, um, a gap between the truth, the reality, it's sort of like this sort of artifice that pervades our, our politics, and literally nothing in this video will shock anybody, but it's like, it's because it's on video, it's he's saying it. So I guess what's your reaction to that, the visual aspect, is that what, why this is important, or... Talk, talk to us about the implications of this recording. Yeah, no, it's it's very, very important. Listen, the the one thing, the, the American people can be slow on the uptake when they're upset with their politicians who are doing things like are happening right now. But they often will eventually get it. The problem is they don't often quite get it quickly enough. You know, they're, they're, they're honorable, I guess, in a way, to say, listen, I'm not going to jump to conclusions even when it looks like this to me. So when you have something visual like this that bridges that gap more quickly, the American people can respond. By the way, that's what the Hunter Biden laptop thing did back in 2020, except, and this is what the politicians know, they threw doubt on it by getting 21 former uh, intel people to say, yeah, no, it's What, what do you think they're going to do, Jim, to this guy? I mean, how do they, do they ignore this? Do they fire the guy? I mean, what's the, what's the, what's the spin? What's the red line on this? There, there's a decent chance that they're going to hang with him, but they might get rid of him. But they're definitely going to come out and say something to the effect, of, oh, oh, he's just a low-level guy. And yeah, I know he's involved with security, but yeah. he doesn't, he's not a it's, it's never about what it is, it's, it's not about the substance of his, what he's saying. They always attack. Correct. Jim, we're going to come back to you. Jack Pasebeck, are you on? James, I, I want to make sure, am I talking to James or, or am I talking to James? I am, I am so confident in my masculine, I am 0% gay, but I'll, I'll take one for the team. Just kidding, just kidding. Those frames, oh my goodness. Yeah, those are, those are some eggshell, John Lennon style. I mean, uh, you know, you put the disguise on, really. I, I, don't, I, can't, I can't do this in my real life. I can't, but to get the story, um, I'll do whatever it takes. Uh, but uh, you Jack, do, you're, you gotta do what you gotta do. Jack, tell me your reaction to this. Just talk. You know, you're a big time political guy. You know more about politics than I do. What's your What's your thought? Well, so there's a lot of uh, things to really plumb the depths of here when it comes to this uh, information that you've retrieved for us. Because a lot of the reporting that I've gotten from actual Biden staffers in the White House currently. 
um, people that are working there saying it, what you're talking about of black staff, thousand percent true. Uh, Kamala treats them as secondary staffers, and and the magic it just kind of wears off after every, you know any given position after about a couple of weeks. The fact that you've been hired by the vice president's office, but then usually you know you know they'll bring their parents in, they'll bring family in, you know get a picture with their their kid and the vice president or something. But they all leave. The high turnover rate is absolutely serious, and I've talked about this. Uh, for years on Human Events Daily, talking about what I called it, you know, we sort of called it the shade war between uh, Kamala and Biden. There's no love lost between the two of them. This was kind of a shotgun marriage that happened, politically speaking, in 2020 because this was the the height of Black Lives Matter. Um, Joe Biden himself originally wanted to choose Amy Klobuchar as his vice presidential candidate, um, but the the again the the apex of the Black Lives Matter movement really drove a lot of the Democrat uh, leadership to have him choose Kamala Harris uh, because of her of the you know what they viewed as her demographic pull. They said there's no way we can have two white people on the ticket. J- Jack, well, before you continue, you're. You're listening to Jack Pasebek react to this bombshell cybersecurity tape in the White House. Um, you say you have sources in the Biden administration? Like you're talking to people inside the, the, exe- the executive office of the White House? You got it. And, and, and they know that they're talking to you, who's more conservative, and they talk to you anyway. Uh, let's, let's just say that there are people in the Biden administration who are not happy with the Biden administration and are more than willing to uh, get the truth out there. Got it. Continue. And so, you know, this has been a line of reporting that I've I've been doing for years and, and talking about this split between the two, that there's no love lost. And yet at the same time, they kind of need each other because Kamala Harris can't run on her own and Joe Biden needs help with this demographic. And so they're they're sort of stuck together. And you would see this from early on in the administration a lot when uh, the Biden you know, White House, and this was really more during Ron Klain's term uh, versus when Je- Jeff Zanes, when he became the chief of staff now, uh, that they would give Kamala these sort of, you know, these sort of impossible scenarios. If you remember, they, they originally sent Kamala Harris to go solve the Ukraine problem uh, just before Russia invaded. They sent her, they said that she was in charge of the border, even though she had never visited there. Uh, they said she was in charge of illegal immigration at one point, all, all of which has stopped. But, you know, these were all deliberate attempts by the, the Biden side of the White House to basically set her up for failure. And that's really what you're hearing confirmed through your this incredible video that you've put what out. What was the most, this, what you, Jack, what was the sources inside the White House that you're talking to? I just learned that you have sources in the White House. That's pretty cool. Um, what part of this tape corroborates that? And what part of this tape is new information to you? Well, so the the part that corroborates was that there were discussions to remove Kamala Harris from the ticket. That is 100% something uh, that I have reported, and and people can go back to Human Events Daily from 2021, from 2022. This is exactly what they were talking about. They were saying, we need to replace her. We need to put somebody else on the ticket. There's got to be something that we can do uh, to get rid of Kamala Harris because of this, this sort of uh, warfare, political warfare that was going on inside the White House. Uh, they they essentially viewed Kamala Harris as thinking that she could usurp Biden, that she would be able to position herself to be the uh, you know the heir apparent. Of course, we've also seen Gavin Newsom play into this. So the idea that that you're getting the corroborate, you have now provided the corroboration publicly on video of a source saying that there was a push within the White House to replace Kamala Harris on the ticket. And from a political perspective, that's absolute. That's an absolute bombshell. So, because we're going into an, an election like this, which is going to be a marginal election. Uh, 2016 was a marginal election. 2020 was a marginal election. These were not blowouts. These were not 60-40 lopsided victories. Uh, and any change, whether at the top of the ticket, which you also talked about uh, with the, the other part of the ticket uh, was obviously somewhere something that's going to be a huge news for anyone uh, in political strategy, whether whether you're on the Democrat or the Republican side, by the way, because these conversations that are being held by the average person on the street are also being held in the highest levels. Of the- Jack, as someone who's an astute observer of politics and you have sources everywhere, um, do you do you um? It, it's almost like there's this fake kind of. I mean, we all know this, but. Um, I guess what I'm trying to ask is, there's this sort of 
artifice that pervades our politics almost to the point where it's, I mean, this guy, it was shocking that he was so open with this. Um, I wonder how many other people, you know, are they going to fire this guy? Like, what, what, what's, what do you think is going to happen to this man? Well, I think what they'll essentially do if, if they're smart. So here's, here's the issue, James, is that what you've actually done is created a security breach at the White House. A security breach. <laughs> So, th so this is a huge problem because this is someone who's not just, you know, some sort of low level staffer. This is someone who's actually in the security system. So if the Secret Service is doing their job, if SISA is doing their job, they're going to have to do a complete scrub on all of this guy's, um, all of this guy's content. Now, now we do have some, some breaking news. He has taken down his Instagram, taken down his LinkedIn. <laughs> obviously, obviously, by the way, what we're going to do, Jack, is we're just going to just hidden camera all the dudes in D.C., and they'll just keep taking down their pages. I mean, it's really this revolutionary kind of medium. For those of you watching, tuning in right now, you're on the inside with James O'Keefe. It's 5 o'clock Eastern time. We're going to be on with you for another hour. Um, Jack Pasebic is on with us reacting to the cybersecurity, saying it's a security breach. So, Jack, didn't you work in intelligence or something like that? Oh, uh, yeah. So I was a Navy intelligence officer, um, uh, serving from uh, about 2010 to about 2019 and uh, deployed multiple times overseas, uh, mostly to East Asia, but also for one, uh, one basically year-long deployment at Guantanamo Bay working in the, uh, the interrogation cell down there. And, and, and um, so, so walk me through what's happening right now in this man's life. He's the cybersecurity official in the executive office of the White House. Does someone call him? What's happening right now and tomorrow? Or, well... Yeah, what's happening? Well, so he's he's going to have to go through a, a, a full a full scope investigation to understand whether or not he has compromised classified information. Now, you have not revealed any classified information that I could tell in your video uh, because it seems that you were more focused on. And again, I, I don't know what other video is still out there. Uh, but from what you've, you've shown so far, it seems to be more the atmospherics, talking about Biden's health, talking about the political situation. Uh, but if he revealed to you any information regarding um, accesses, any information regarding what, what type of programs he is directly working on or the specifics of those programs, uh, then that's a massive national security leak from the Biden administration, uh, essentially showing that their top officials that they have supposedly working on these cybersecurity programs are, you know, going on to these, uh, I believe you said meeting. Um, okay, we have some more, we have some more breaking news, Jack. This is all breaking. I love breaking news. The only type of news I like to do is the breaking type and the factual it's type. The I don't like to opine. I don't like to offer my opinion. I just like facts and breaking news. And breaking news, Tinder has just gotten rid of my profile, ladies and gentlemen. Tinder has shut down James O'Keefe's dating profile. Now, what the most extraordinary thing about the tape featuring the executive office of the White House guy is that I actually used my actual name, James, on Tinder, Jack. <laughs> Can you so, believe so, that? So, so, so you use Tinder. <laughs> I use, I use Tinder, James. and I use my first name, James. I don't know if the, I guess I put O'Keefe in there somewhere, but it didn't show up on the profile. And I use real photos of me in glasses and things. So this is just, this is a, what type of clown show the boys over there running at the executive office of the White House? Um, this, this is, if there was any name that I'd want to pick, you're, you're trending right now, by the way, on, on X. I guess I'm going to use Grinder from now on. Yeah, you have to use, you have to use... Now, now, this, now, now, as an intelligence, I mean, th th this dude went to Harvard, he went to Georgetown, he's in, he's in counterintelligence, I mean, do you think it's narcissism? Do you think it's, what, what is the psychological, was he, was he horny? I mean, I mean... Okay, I, okay, so... So this this I can't explain um, because I worked in the, in, in the Navy intelligence community and I, I mentioned I did deployments, but I also spent a lot of time working in the intel community within the Beltway. I've been to every three-letter agency, acronym agency that you can think of in the entire Beltway, uh, CIA included, the old building and the new. And most, I'd say 80 to 90%, and there's something that he said to you in that video that really caught my attention. He said that he was essentially wanted to be part of the foreign service program um and this is of course the mo one of the most prestigious 
uh, appointments within the federal government. Um, historically, it's been very prestigious. You are essentially an official American diplomat going overseas, uh, empowered to do the work of the United States abroad. And so for a lot of Ivy Leaguers or strivers or the highly ambitious in Washington, D.C., you are uh, you are you are, are fighting as hard as possible tooth and nail to get into this program. However, a lot of huh. people do not make it. They don't make the cut uh, because there are obviously a limited number there. And so what to do with people who have who's done all that work, who've done all that training, who've got their, their bachelors, who've got their masters, a lot of them find their way into the Intel community and they sort huh. of co- go over there as a as a kind of uh you know consolation prize rather than going into the foreign service office huh. uh full full disclosure i was not interested in going to foreign service in any way shape or form and so i'm definitely not one of these guys um and so and you hear that in his voice where he had you know kind of originally intended to go there as he's giving you his bio and yet uh, because they have their their schooling, because they've spent enough time on campus, because they feel that they've gone through these mm-hmm. these programs, uh, they uh, they have an incredible amount of narcissism, of self centeredism, of of uh, hubris, just absolute hubris that they are the masters. Well, it's also of the idea of the it, of the world. It's also the idea of sort of confession that that there is a divergence between the reality of things and the and the Potemkin village they have to construct. And, and I think it's that, that, that tension, because most intelligent people are, he's a rational guy, he goes to Kennedy School of Government. So as long as there's, I mean, here's my take, as long as there's gonna be that divergence between the way things are and what they're, the, 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 what did he call it, the tagline? What was the line he said in the video? He said, we have to toe the line. As long as there's going to be that gap, there's always going to be room for people like me to expose it, right? And, it, and they're going to talk. And James, and James, uh, I, I would honestly, and, and from another perspective, if you're looking at it from a security angle, it, he's luckily he was targeted by you, who are an American and a patriot, mm-hmm. because because what you're what you're also exposing is how easy it would be for the Chinese Communist Party or the Iranian honeypots or Russia or whoever, right? Any foreign service, Qatar, Saudis to target and infiltrate the Biden administration by using the exact same tactics you showed. Now, of course, you're using it for journalism and you're giving that to the American people. But let's say you were a foreign, you one of these foreign intelligence agencies. Uh, let's say you were the Chinese MSS. Let's say you were uh, working for Iran and obviously we're in uh, a, a you know, all quasi-direct conflict with Iran right now, as well as a quasi-direct conflict with Russia. I would absolutely be looking at this as a direct way to get into the White House and directly influence or steal information. Now, now, when, now, now, Jack, as a journalist, as an investigative reporter, my mission is to inform the public, but spies, what would be their mission if they were to try to get him? Get leverage, or what, what, what is the mission of a spy against a guy like this? So the mission of the spy is to turn someone against their government and to work against it. So uh, you would be. So there, there are a few ways to do this. One would be to, uh, uh, as you say, to appeal to their sense of narcissism, to appeal to their sense of knowing better, knowing what's best, knowing how the company line must be made, even though they know it's not true. So you, you could appeal to that. And certainly the, the Israel issue right now is as a direct uh, vector for that, as well as the Chinese issue, the same way that. Uh, the Russia issue was during the Trump administration. Uh, so I'll give you an example. During the Trump administration, uh, the Chinese were target and Qataris were targeting uh, basically left-wing intel, uh, intel agents and intel officials within the Beltway saying, you can't let Donald Trump, uh, you know, destroy the country. He's working for the Russians. The patriotic thing to do would be to go in and steal information about these classified systems so that we can stop Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. And so that so we can save America. So they're sort of appealing to that narcissism. Uh, you also you actually did a little bit when you were saying, "Oh, you're like James Bond." You know, I, there was an interesting moment where, where yeah. it, the audience is asking me, and you can comment for those of you just joining us. I have to do the reset. This is live radio, so forgive me for a moment. Um, if you're just tuning in, breaking news: the the video of the of the cyber security official in the executive office of the White House telling me, "quote what we can't say publicly," unquote, about Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. You're listening to Jack Pasebek, who is an intelligence officer in the Navy, talk about the espionage. Uh, this is journalism, obviously, but the uh, the security breach that this this video shows of a, of a guy in the White House talking to James O'Keefe in disguise. Um, I'm a thespian. I've played the role of pimp, drug dealer. 
I've played many different roles, Osama bin Laden, undercover, brothel dude, and now I'm playing a gay man on TV. I'll do anything for the team to get the story. Not gay, but, um, but man, I hope you like my, my uh, mannerisms there. Um, now, um, Jack, can you just stay with us for, I don't know, if you can, we'll come back to you, but I have to go, uh, I have to talk about something before I get to, we have Kent, I'm sorry, we have, we have Millie, we have Chart, uh, if you could just hold on for one second. Um, now, a, little, a word about the undercover work we do here at OMG, um, exposing things that need to be exposed. It's risky, it's controversial, it's expensive. You saw in the video there, Citizen Journalism Foundation, we have a new nonprofit, it takes a lot of money, and I'm super blessed now to have folks that will step up and back us financially, uh, who actually have the backbone to support our mission, because you know that I, uh, I'm always a target. And I, and, I, and I tweeted that out the other night because I don't care about what they do to me. I don't even think about that. I don't worry about that. Why is I so worried all the time? And I don't, you know, I, I think it's really faith over fear. But there are certain groups that have the balls to be in the trenches with us. Um, one of those is the Wellness Company. Wellness Company is with us all the way, and I'm fortunate to have gotten to know them. I met them in Florida last week, and I'm going to tell you why you need to know them. Uh, do you remember the event, 201 in October of 29, Bill Gates and the World Economic Forum's plotting and scheming? By the way, I think that Jack went to the WEF. Or was it Davos? I wanted to go. I couldn't go because I was on the border. Um, Bill Gates scheming, and what just happened a couple months later, COVID-19. Well, the World Economic Forum met again just a few weeks ago, and now they have this disease X on the docket. The website states, with fresh warnings from the WHO, that an unknown disease X could result in 20 times more fatalities in the coronavirus pandemic. What novel efforts are needed to prepare healthcare systems for the multiple challenges ahead? Does that sound familiar? Well, they pulled the wool over eyes in 2020, but they're planning to do it now, this year. You saw the Pfizer story. We're going to be doing more stories. I think it's the border, pharma, and elections interference. Those are the three this year. We're doing all three at OMG. <laughs> I don't know what this one constitutes. Is this election interference? I don't know. The, the, the dude inside the White House saying we can't say this publicly. Let's call that election interference. It's sort of the public have a right to know the lies. So the most important thing you can do is be prepared with the full supply of medications on hand. I have a cold. I, I, I work through my colds. I just took, I just took um, one of these, ivermectin, because I just don't take a day off. So they have, they have this emergency kit. In 2020, you could barely get out of your house, let alone get to a hospital or urgent care. And even if you did, the wait times were insane. The cost of doctor visits and ambulance services were astronomical, and supplies of even the most basic medicines were scarce, in many cases, totally out. So you need a supply of meds at home for you and your family. You don't want to get caught. I travel with this thing now. I just met them a couple weeks ago. And this kit includes eight life-saving medications, including amoxicillin, a Z-Pak, and ivermectin, which I'm currently taking because I have a cold. <laughs> um, from tick bites to COVID to extreme bioterror events, the wellness company has every scenario covered. And I can assure you, I have the kit right here in front of me. Um, so you can grab that for your family and save 15% on your purchase. Grab a pen and write this down. Go to twc.health slash omg. That's twc.health slash omg and grab your emergency kit right now. That'll save you 15%. The government is counting on you being caught off guard, so don't wait until you need it. Take back control of your health with the wellness company's medical kit. The wellness company has brass balls for backing us at OMG, supporting our work. And I'm glad to be able to tell you that their medical emergency kit, 15% off, twc.health slash OMG. Chart Westcott, are you there? Hey, James, how you doing, partner? Chart, you're a good friend. You often have the, um, an amazing way of describing things. I love how you described the teachers union video in New Jersey that we did. Like you said, it was like a cast of characters that everyone knows. Um, what is your reaction to the story chart of the cybersecurity official saying that we don't want the public to know what's going on? I got to be honest, man, it's, it's pretty depressing um, on, on multiple levels. And, uh, you know, Jack really spoke to a lot of them that, I mean, if, if you're the Iranians, the Russians and the Chinese, I mean, you're just licking your chops here, and you know, going on grinder and, and recruiting folks. I mean, it's just is depressing to think that 
our government is so poorly operated that we're just basically an open book to to anyone who wants to look. Because, I mean, if we think it ends with this guy, I mean, forget about it. Like, if they, if he can be got, almost any of them can be got just as easily at the right Georgetown cocktail party. And that's really depressing to think because I actually want our government to, you know, work. And these guys uh, just seem to be clowns, as you put it so perfectly. Clowns is, uh, you know, at least clowns know what they're doing. They're supposed to entertain. These people are incompetent fools, and, you know, frankly, it's sick. So your reaction is one of depression, that, that you feel bad that our government is so poorly run? Yeah, I mean, it's, look, not like they're concealing things, obviously, and, and that's angering, but uh, it is depressing that, you know, that if our enemies want to, they can get just about anything they want. And yes, there's, you know, enemies within our, our own government, and they're certainly, uh, you know, conspiring against us, as he openly uh, admitted in various ways, and uh, conspiring against the truth uh, when you know, he says that folks know all about, um, you know, the Biden sort of mental issues, so to speak, and they don't speak out on it, and they don't speak out on it publicly. Um, and really, you know, it, it, it makes the case as you get further down the road here and you think about, um, you know, potentially, and I hope not, but potentially a Biden second term, that the 25th Amendment is going to absolutely be in play um, by the end of that. And, and, and that's, you know... <laughs> President Kamala Harris, um, you know, not exactly rolling off the tongue with glee uh, for me. So. I mean, um, in chart, you know, do you think it's going to be more difficult for me to go expose guys like this in D.C. and New York and L.A., or is the narcissism and the divergence between the reality and the towing, the, the line, the Potemkin village so great that people will just slip up and confess? Like, like are we going to turn to the Soviet Union? What's your... What's your um, Sami Stott? Remember that in the Soviet Sami Stott in the Soviet Union was sure. the was the secret newspaper because everyone knew the lie, but they had to participate in it. What's your thought on that as OMG expands and hundreds of people do this? You know, I actually asked this question to uh, Martin Gurry, uh, who wrote a book called The Revolt of the Public. When you know you first started talking about mass citizen journalism, and you know he thought that what we were going to be doing would mostly be relegated to, as he put it, quote, conservative ghettos. Um, and I think there is something to that, that, you know, we are, we do get into a bit of an echo chamber sometimes around here. But when you expose people at this level and saying truths that are this relevant uh, about what is actually going on behind closed doors, that really gives me hope um, that you may be able to change some of the culture around uh you know this the decaying carcass that is our late stage republic um so that gives me hope james as long as they're as long as the reality is different than than the tape and then um millie weaver your hand is raised what's your reaction to this tape thanks james uh so actually i kind of feel optimistic after <coughs> watching the video um i commend you on going out and getting this uh, interview with this person and taking one for the team and doing these dating profiles to do so. But I actually feel very hopeful because it seems like, you know, these people are really actually pretty easy to infiltrate, to expose, to, uh, to do what you're doing with. I mean, and, and one of the things that really stood out to me, James, was this individual's background in the State Department as well as USAID. Well, that just so happens to match the exact backgrounds of the feds for democracy, the federal bureaucrats who I recently did a Twitter thread on. I exposed a video, a Zoom call video, where these federal workers were all planning and conspiring to subvert the U.S. government and talking about tactics to use to subvert President Trump and the government. And guess what, James? Many of those individuals also worked at the State Department as well as USAID. So there definitely seems to be some kind of a, a group of people in those particular mm -hmm. departments that definitely are engaging in subversive activities. Well, um, you know, it gives you hope, Millie. It gave Chart, it made Chart depressed. Hey, Jack Pasebic, you still there? Well, if you're on with us still, Jack. Uh, we'll try to go back to him. 
Um, hey, Jim, Jim Paffey, how does it make you feel? Does it make you feel encouraged or depressed? I don't know if Jim is still with us. We'll wait for those guys to come back. Hey, I'm sorry, guys, I was on mute. Um, hey, uh, you know, Millie, you said it makes you feel encouraged. Chart made it, made it, said it made him feel depressed. Um, Jack Pasebic, if you're still with us, are you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Does this, does this encourage you? Does it depress you? How are you feeling emotionally after something like this is revealed? Well, I, I, you know, I, I look at it in terms of, you know, what, what are the opportunities? What are the indicators? What are the warnings from this? And you got to size up any situation. Um, I, I honestly, I kind of would say I agree with what you said in the, in the initial clip that it's, it's just a clown show. They're an absolute clown show up there. They're a, a complete Potemkin village. They are trying to project strength. They want to portray Joe Biden as a wartime president, um, in which in one case, by the way, I should say that does give me pause uh, because in, in trying to portray him as a wartime president, it also means there is a higher uh, capacity or a higher likelihood and probability that this White House will uh, choose military intervention or military retaliation in a larger way than we've seen from other administrations in order to try to show that strength that Joe Biden, as you have identified, as we've all identified, and as this this individual himself identifies, uh, simply is not there on its own. And so this is what they try to do when they, when they run their sort of, uh, oh, our opponents are domestic extremists. They try to paint uh, anyone who's a conservative or a pro-lifer, we, we, by the way, just had pro-lifers, um, I believe, indicted and convicted, uh, sentenced for over a decade or something like this, uh, 11 years in Washington, D.C., um, as well as many patriots from January 6th, a very suspicious and sinister event, which we continue to learn more about, uh, be locked up. Again, he tries to do these things to show and project strength because he doesn't have any soft power. He doesn't have any personal power. And instead, what he has is the hard power of the government, uh, the power of drones, of bombs, of cruise missiles, of handcuffs uh, and lawfare, well, which, of course, uh, obviously you yourself. Have, well, let's have do experience. let's do a little bit of a reset here. You know, Jack, you know, we're listening to Jack Prasebek, Millie Weaver, Jim Paffey and uh, the muckraking guys all reacting to this White House official. Um, you know, I will say this, Jack, you know, he, he you know, I did this with the governor of New Jersey, really tall, imposing character, um, you know. And I, when I confronted him, I, I, I towering felt towering over you, towering. I don't know, he's six Andre foot the, five. I it was Andre the Giant for a second there. Yeah, I mean, this is a pretty tall guy. And but the, but what I found when I he sort of hunched and sort of crept away, and I just find these people these sort of hollow men, like the administrative state. We think of these big spooks, these CIA, big time, big guys, but like honestly, they, they don't. When you look at this tape and you see this top official who has worked in the State Department and the USAID, USAID and the White House, I just he just kind of seems kind of almost like a pipsqueak, you know? Is that? Yeah, they want you to think it's uh, it's Jack Reacher, right? Where he's like six five, right. and you know this massive slab. But but there's a great um, there's a great C.S. Lewis quote that that I'm reminded of in the Abolition of Man, where he says. We make men without chests and expect of them virtue and enterprise. We laugh at honor and we are shocked to find traitors in our midst. We castrate and build the geldings to be fruitful. And he, he wrote that almost 80 years ago. Hollow men, men without chests. Uh, and is that is that par for the course in the administrative state? Like, is this guy a few standard deviations away from the mean? Or is this usually how it works? Oh, no, this this guy is straight from central casting. This is what they all look like. Uh, you know, some of them you know, spend a little more time in the gym, but spiritually <laughs> speaking, this is exactly who they are. Their power is not derived from uh, their ability to either physically defend themselves or being willing to physically defend themselves. It's derived from consensus. It's derived from system. It's derived from... Uh, appeal to authority and positions of authority. He, you know, he's constantly, you know, he, he's, he loves telling you his biography. He loves telling you 
all the places that he's, he's studied at and the positions that he has. This is Washington, D.C. You know, who do you work for? It's the first question out of anyone's mouth, both sides of the aisle, by the way, in Washington, D.C. And well, we have some, speaking of what he loves to do, yeah, he, views he does himself as, as low status, basically. He views himself as low status, so he derives his status from his his connections and his network. Speaking of what he loves to do, he loves to talk about himself on social media, but breaking news, I love breaking news. I love breaking, it's the only news there is. Mr. Cybersecurity Man has just deleted his, his ex account. Just deleted it. If you go to, oh, no. if you go to our, um, they always do this. I don't know why they do this. It's just crazy. Well, we, that's a whole psychological thing. If you go to his account, it has officially been deleted. You can no longer find him on X. I don't know if it's true. If someone could let us know if his LinkedIn's gone. Has I'm gonna miss his posts. I mean, they were just uh, He say he likes long walks life. on the beach and diplomatic conversation. Um, he and our lady of his followers will be missed. <laughs> Flex, what's going on, man? All right, who, who do we got Flex. talking there? Who goes there? Mr. O'Keefe, it is I, the great Malcolm Flex, not a 115er, and I assure you I have plenty of chess, unlike these PC, uh, these uh, weird new type PC males. Speaking, of, speaking of tall, imposing characters, you're six foot five, you're a mixed martial artist and former athlete um, turned reality analyst. What's your take on this cinema verite? Uh, visual of the cybersecurity official telling the public what they don't know and they don't want the public to know. Well, I had a great joke lined up, but I think everybody's kind of beat me to it, including this guy. But this guy is in charge of keeping all of the cybersecurity data for the national security apparatus, and yet he gave it all away on a date with James O'Keefe. Not even wearing an amazing costume, mind you. No, I didn't I didn't invest too much time. You know, I always say it at the, one of my rules was your, your manner matters more than your costume. If you're, we're live streaming, I'm gonna put on the glasses here. You see those glasses? Those have a hidden camera in them. And you might say, James, OPSEC, OPSEC, don't give away your secrets. We have like, like, I'm looking at my producer. We literally have like 45 pairs of glasses in our head. We have so many hidden cameras. Like we don't even wear the same, we didn't even use the same hidden cameras twice. Mark Cuban's like, where's your camera? I'm not gonna tell Mark Cuban where my camera is. Mark Cuban's dude assaulted the guy who held the iPhone. And, and then people say, James, you should have answered Mark Cuban's question. I'm not gonna have them destroy my camera. Oh, breaking news, breaking news. Charlie Krager has just deleted his LinkedIn account. Scrubbed it, it's gone. You can't look him up. So I got an idea. How about we just keep investigating every official in the United States government and they just all delete their social media? One by one. How about that? Does that sound like a good idea? You Charlie, can... if you, I, I, I fully endorse you going on as many grinder dates as it takes to clean up the entire swamp. <laughs> well, it's not just me. I hope, I, I hope this is inspiring, Jack, to other people here because I'm really getting sick and tired of your excuses, ladies and gentlemen. Everyone's got an excuse. Oh, I can't do what you do, James. And I, and I always ask why, and you know what? It's actually funny, you know what the reason they give me is? Uh, like I'm talking to someone in like Tucson, Arizona. They'll go, because I'm really recognizable in my community. So now you know what I'm gonna say? I'm gonna say, well gee, that's interesting. Because if James O'Keefe, the founder of Project Veritas, can meet undercover with the cybersecurity official in the White House, you don't have an excuse. You really don't. Um, and I'm tired of your excuses. Uh, let's go back to um, my six foot five inch friend. Are you still there? Do we lose him? I think he dropped. All right, well, let's go to someone else. Let's go to Laura. You got your hand raised. What do you think? I think, bravo, that your work is amazing, so congratulations once again. I have a quick question. Actually, two quick ones, and I know you don't, you don't like long-winded. So the first question is, has anybody from uh, DC reached out to you from the administration? And two, I know you're not afraid, but at times you feel like you're being followed, and those are my two questions, and, and I'll leave you be. 
Well, I've been incarcerated and I've had FBI agents point guns at me. So I, I, I feel like they've tried repeatedly and, and constantly. The Attorney General Eric Holder coming after me years ago with this in Louisiana and then the Biden diary thing. So it's been one thing after the next. Uh, removed from the company I founded. So it's just almost the idea of sort of never giving up. It's like, what's, what now? Like, what do you got now? Like, did you use all of your arrows in the quiver? Um, so I get tired of the people projecting the fear. So I wrote a very carefully worded essay on this and I posted it. People say, why are you being melodramatic? It's not melodrama, it's my thoughts. My, I, I spent, a, you know, a few hours carefully articulating my perspective on fear. But what about what they do to you? Well, it's not, I don't, I don't have any power over what they do to me. And I think that what stands between us and the Leviathan is not the enemy, it's ourselves. It's, it's the weakness in each other. It's the betrayal, it's the love of money, it's the, um, it's the selling out your principles for something else. That's the thing that we're really fighting. I don't think it's the government or even this administration that is our problem, it's, it's us. And that's what I'm telling you. It's not them, the bad guys, the libtards, I don't know what the heck you guys are thinking. It's actually us not willing to do anything, okay? That's the real enemy. That's the thing that terrifies, that, that's what I'm afraid of, if, it, if that's even a thing, I guess that's a paradox, but it's, it's the inaction, it's the cowardice and the weakness. Is that, I know that's kind of not the direct answer to your question, am I afraid they're gonna follow me, but no, I'm not afraid they're gonna follow me, I'm, I'm afraid I'm gonna be alone out there without people you know, by my side, that's what we need. And I, and I, and I think it's starting to change. Let's go to Brea, Brea, uh, are you, uh, Bree? I can't pronounce your first name. Uh, Bree. Bree. Hey, James. Bree, right. go ahead. Uh, thanks, thanks so much. Uh, good job and great, great scoop. Um, I, I'd be interested, um, you know, I work with Daily, Daily Wire, so just as a, a full disclosure there. I'd be interested um, why you cite Leviathan. That's the first thing, to, you know, just based off of this particular, I guess, honey trap, <laughs> why you're citing Leviathan. And secondly, um, I'd be interested in um, hearing more, I guess, from Jack on his perspectives of this type of honey trapping in Washington, D.C. Is it prevalent? Um, are we starting to see that our intelligence communities are likely um, very compromised? Um, I, Jack and I have backgrounds that are similar, and man, oh man, this type of thing, um, <laughs> it, it really causes me to find uh, some 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 concern in and how these guys are acting and how open they are on social media, for example. J Jack, your reaction is this honey trapping. I don't know if I would call it that in this case, but is honey trapping a thing in D.C., Jack? Oh, it 100 percent is. And, and actually, I, I, I meant to say, and, and what's up, Bree? How are you, by the way? Um, hey, Jack. I, and that uh, the next thing that you would attempt to do, now James, I, I'm sure you wouldn't of course do this, but the next thing that if I, were I a, a, a foreign uh, adversary or a foreign security agency, one of the first things I do is attempt to generate blackmail on the individual, on the target. So when you generate the blackmail, you then essentially are able to control them. And, and essentially it says all the work you've done, all the narcissism, everything that you've created, uh, because of course we found that sexual anarchy has already infiltrated every institution, that uh, you, you are now in, uh, in control of this foreign adversary. And this has been done, of course, you know, throughout history. This is nothing new, but it's showing an absolutely wide open vector for these individuals to get blackmail on them. Um, obviously, this is, you know, it goes without saying that this is similar uh, in the vein of what uh, Jeffrey Epstein was doing, obviously at a much more elite level, generating blackmail on people in high positions. Uh, again, generating blackmail on someone, that's how you can get uh, secret war plans out for- Hey, hey, Jack, hey Jack, this is James. Retaliation against the Iranians. Jack, when, when people, when you say blackmail, because that was the kind of the subject, the theme of the series here in DC, how does that actually work? 
like some other person other than me gets information like this on this guy, and then what happens? Oh, well, then what happens is that they're they're brought to a meeting, and uh, typically, so let's let's say you know male or female, whoever the you know the date the the dater is, is not the person who's um, who's who's running it. They would then have a handler, and you would go to that meeting. Maybe it's at a motel somewhere where you think you're showing up for. Yeah, you think you're showing up for a, a fun evening. You think you're showing up for a, a you know, a, a romp in the woods, as you so to say. And instead, there's somebody from the foreign embassy or somebody associated with the foreign intelligence service that's waiting for you, uh, that sits you down and shows you some pictures of what you've been up to and, and tells you uh, these pictures will be given to your family. These pictures wow. will be given to your, your, your office. You're given to your boss. They'll be posted online. Your, wife, your life will be destroyed. Wow. Or... Or, or you could give us copies of your emails for the last 10 days, and then they start, they begin with small tasking, and it moves bigger and bigger. Now, is that, Jack, is that legal for the government to, I guess it is legal for the for foreign government, it's, it's, it, what's the legality of this? Well, I mean, you know, of course, this is, this is, uh, you know, this is spycraft. This is completely illegal in every country that it's done. And yet every foreign intelligence service does this in every country in which they operate to include the United States. Um, James, what you did, job. what you did was legal, right? Well, I'm not, but I'm not. You did was legal. But no, and, no, I'm not. I'm not. You, I'm not engaging in blackmail because my. For sure, for sure. I think. Maybe, I think that's the point that I think, as a journalist, to a journalist and everybody who's listening here, why it's so powerful that journalism is the weapon of the people. Because if you see that the intelligence communities are doing this in order to blackmail and exploit. We do this type of meetup or investigative reporting or you know undercover reporting in order to bring out into the light that which is being done in the darkness, right? So what we are doing is for the good versus what they are doing, which is seeking to exploit. That's a very important distinction, Bree. Incredibly important distinction. By the way, the Biden administration, Jack, um, initially they dropped this, but they in the search warrant when they raided my home, they put blackmail as one of the potential crimes simply because I reached out to Biden for comment. It's remarkable. I remember that. They, but they dropped that when they raided me. That was in the initial secret subpoena warrants they gave to Google and Apple. That was in like 20, 2020. And then in 21, when they raided me, they dropped it. Because, because Roberta Kaplan, that's the same lawyer, Jack, representing the woman that sued Trump for defamation. I forgot the woman's name. What's her name? Eugene Carroll. Carroll. Carroll's lawyer. Kaplan, Kaplan was the lawyer representing Ashley Biden. It's funny how that works. I, I called Biden, or I called Biden for comment, reached out via letter, and they accused us of blackmail for asking for comment. Um, and it is a fine line. If you were to do something like, you know, I have this information, please give me money, and then I won't publish it, that's blackmail. So never, I would never do that, never have done that. But Bree, that's a very important distinction. Uh, Jim, your, your hand is raised, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was just gonna say, I did what you're talking about with people getting involved like that that is specifically what changes this paradigm as, as jack and brie can tell you and my years that i spent on capitol hill th the real problem is these people it, it's really kind of incestuous in a way uh we talked about someone wanting to you know talking about who, who they worked with and what they did these people feel like they have so much power and influence that every time they get to it, they use it and in ways that make them feel great about utilizing power. So, uh, you know, a guy like this is you know, feels like he's something and, he, and then he likes to throw that around. That's the big problem. And the only way to change that paradigm is what is a soft revolution every two years at the ballot box. You know, we, we go and we elect out or in people. Are you guys there? Jim, did I lose you? Can you hear me? Still on? Sorry, one minute, technical difficulties. To this and that follows what you're doing 
they do need to get involved to your, uh, as you ask them to at your behest. It's a, it's a big issue that's got to be addressed, and the people are the ones who can get it done. I'm not on. I got a request to speak. Give us one second. Hey, James, I think you're, you're, you're muted, but if I could just quick follow in uh, what Jim said. Um, not just that, you know, we have, everybody has a cell phone nowadays. Everybody has the let ability me back in. to um, obtain information, but information is power. And I think is that that's mine? where we start to no, talk about, mine. like, looking, holding, holding Have them let me back in. Providing facts, providing evidence, not just yep. believe me because of, you know, what I do. Um, journalists are the weapon of the right out of the mouth of the individual he was interviewing. He doesn't have to make this up. Um, so, yes, uh, congratulations again, uh, James. And, and hopefully we'll see more exposure, this type of exposure. And let me tell you, coming from the Vatican, I, I mean, <laughs> I'm sure, uh, you know, Jack could probably speak to this too. If something was set up like this in the Vatican, oh, what tales would be told, you know, from, from you know, the, the corruption that we're seeing and how manipulation has been happening on the world stage. Um, behind the scenes by bad actors trying to manipulate ideology. Yeah, the you're, you're, I think you're, you're, you're the same character you played, you played on this video, video might work with some of these, these uh, some of these Vatican, Vatican officials too. Oh, goodness. Like, just just yeah. saying, man. Yeah, and I'm, you know... By the way, do we have, am I seeing, do we have Luke Dobbs in the, in the chat? Not in. I need help. I need help. It is. I need help. It's not working. He just... Can you hear me? This is James. Can you guys hear me? Can you hear me? This is James. Yeah, we can hear you. Technical difficulties. People, our internet's getting kicked off. It's weird. Who knows what's going on? I'm being surveilled, whatever. We're doing it live. Um, I'm off on mute. There we go. Okay, good. Um, we had Lou Dobbs in the channel. Is he, he left? You did, and as soon as Jack that's kind of funny how that works. So we got about 20 minutes left. I'm, by the way, if you're looking at me on Rumble and YouTube, I'm wearing the spy glasses. It's, not, it's like journalist glasses. Espionage and journalism overlaps in the Venn diagram. As Bree so eloquently stated, an investigative reporter's job is to inform the public a spy is to blackmail people. Hey, Jack, did you say you wanted to say one more thing or you had another comment or was it just about Dobbs? Oh, no, I wanted to see, I, I wanted to see if I can reach out. Um, I've got I've got some connections with uh, I know I know Lou's uh, producer, but he may have to run. I think he has his show. That might be maybe why he had to bounce. Uh, I also DM'd him, him myself too. Was here. That would have been cool. But no, no, really, just this idea that um, these blackmail operations and James, the idea that th this could start from one innocuous date, and that's that's how it starts, right? It's one date then another date, then a third date, then you keep going. And, and then once they have you within the web, uh, they, they start plying you with money, they start plying, and, and we've gone through, I went through so many trainings, we've seen this happen throughout our history. Sometimes these operations can run for years. If they get someone who, like this guy, has ties to the civil service, maybe he starts in the Biden admin, then they put him over at Homeland Security. Then he stays there during, let's say, Trump gets back in. So he's there during the Trump admin. Now they've got a source there. Uh, they can build these people up into very high level uh, areas of the government, very high tier. And so these these operations can last decades. Uh, there was a Robert Hansen over at the FBI was almost a two decade long um, operative for the USSR during the Cold War. And so and and he, by the way, his job was to go after other people who were suspected of spying. It's, it was incredible. They actually flipped the guy whose job it was to run counterintelligence. Uh, I mean, what, what a coup. Obviously, the, one of the biggest coups in, in the entire Cold War spy v. spy world. Uh, and so when I look at a situation now where we currently just saw three dead Americans because of a lapse in security in one of these bases in the Middle East, uh, this this drone kamikaze drone that struck down. I really question the this as you say rightfully so the security of the White House because as as any any intelligence agent will tell you any intelligence officer anyone who's worked in it no or any security system in the world is only as good as the person manning the door. Well, um, I, this is gonna I think this is gonna kick off my prediction, Jack. Is this is gonna kick off a revolution of citizen journalists that will go out and do likewise. This is not easy work to do. 
It requires um, an artistic flair. It requires discipline. It requires technology. It requires storytelling. It requires the ability to speak and think and, and, and communicate succinctly, which most people suck at. No one can really do that. People like to talk, yammer on and on. And it's a visual medium. I want to go to Jordan, Jordan Conradson. You've been very patient. And then we're going to go to lightning round. Uh, go ahead, Jordan. What's your reaction? Thank you, James. Yeah, you know, my biggest reaction to this is um, when, when you were talking about how, oh, you, you're going to ruin his life. There's people DMing you crap like that. It's, it's like this guy ruined his own life, if, if, if anything. I mean, he's speaking so freely and selling basically the, the secrets of the Biden administration to some stranger he doesn't even know. And all the while, there's cameras right right on his shoulder watching him and it's like seriously a lack of you know situational self-awareness and realizing what could be going on here but yeah to build on what Pasovic was saying about how this could be espionage and used by foreign adversaries to target Biden administration officials it it doesn't seem too hard because what you did was you slapped on some sunglasses spray painted your hair it wasn't too difficult and you just took my date and asked him some questions. I mean, if, if it's that easy to get information out of our top officials in the White House and the executive office, then, I mean, it's scary, in my opinion. Well, it's, 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 it's fascinating uh, sociology because people are going to have to pretend like they're in the Soviet Union, and, and when they're out and about, they're going to have to be all stiff and stale and on the talking point to their buddy. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. <laughs> So it's like, what are they going to do? They're going to go into talk. Did you notice in the video, if you, if you haven't watched the video, if you're just tuning in, we're talking about the cybersecurity official in the White House. And it, towards the end of the video, when I say I take off my glasses, and I'm like, what the heck are you guys doing over there in the White House? And then the guy, did you notice, Jordan, he immediately goes into talking point mode? He's like, we have excellent cybersecurity in the White House. He starts talking like Potemkin-like. He starts reading the press release. <laughs> so right. the problem is, from my perspective, you can't, it's like if people just start talking that way, it doesn't work. It's not conversational. So I, and my opinion is that, that, that this sort of, that this sort of journalism is the only solution. Jim mentioned, well, elections, but elections doesn't, that doesn't affect this guy's job because this guy's part of the permanent administrative class. He's in there regardless of who wins. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, I, we'll see what happens. We'll see. The Jordan, are you going to reach out to the White House for comment? I, I could. I, I might as well, but they're not going to ever respond to me. I mean, with the Gateway Pundit, they're just going to leave it on red and never get back to us. But, yeah, I, I probably should try that. Any other reactions you have, Jordan? Um, you know, not really. I, I just thought, I just think it's hilarious, honestly, that you can, you know, really sting someone so easily from the government and they're just so you know it, it shows that the Biden administration is not does not have the best and brightest you know working around them and protecting their so-called secrets thanks Jordan um, we're gonna go to lightning round we got 15 minutes perhaps 20 Dallas your hand is raised and this you're gonna do 30 seconds or less give us your thoughts reaction or ask a question go ahead yeah, thanks for having me up, and uh, thanks for what you guys do. I said, you know, uh, they had a discussion about getting, you know, getting rid of Kamala and going with somebody else. I'm curious, like, I mean, I've got a decent idea in my mind, but in, in your mind, you're obviously much more connected. Uh, who do you think consists of the they at this moment in time, and who are the big decision makers in, in making the decision to sort of go with Kamala or you know, remove her and try to go with somebody else. Who holds the power at this moment to make a decision like that? Well, I can only quote the man. I don't have any inside knowledge other than what he's saying. But in the video, he says his colleagues at the executive office of the White House. He, he identifies what he's heard and what he's seen. Um, so that's all I can say. Um, let's go to Jennifer. Jennifer McWilliams, are you there? Yeah, hey, James, thank you so much. Um, so, first of all, I just want to say, James, you're, you're not alone. Um, I'm the co-founder of Persia's a Habit. 
And so the reason we named our organization that is because we realized America has made fear a habit. And so our mission is to make courage America's habit again. But I want to thank you for exposing this government propaganda. And I want to bring attention to Charlie Crager's, um, you know, exposed government method of deception. Because, you know, which is how they're brainwashing, the way he talks, right, when, when, he, when he, you were exposed who you were, okay, compared to when he didn't know. Um, this is how they brainwash not only the American people, and they do this um, by the smith mudson Moderation Act of 2012. And I hope people look into that because it was... Um, Thank you. Better. Thank you very much. Thanks for the comment. Let's go to Matt Baker. Go ahead, Matt. You're live mm -hmm. on the inside with James O'Keefe. James, you're the man. True inspiration to all of us. Uh, what strikes fear into the hearts of people is the three-letter agencies like FBI, CIA, you know, because they are the intelligence agencies. Well, the change is happening now is that the human resistance, we have now got the largest expansive intelligence agency ever concocted just with the average human beings that are gathering together on X and with the work of people like yourself. I love you, man. Thanks, bro, for Th all you do. Thanks for the comment. If you're just tuning in, we're at the end of a two hour long space. You're on the inside with James O'Keefe. And if you're looking at Rumble or YouTube, I'm wearing these glasses with a camera in them. You might be saying, well, you should not show the people your technology. Well, we have lots of different technology. And people, most people in America don't even know who I am. Let's be real. Like, there's a couple million people that pay attention. And then you have like 300 million people that don't pay attention. Um, but you can buy this stuff at O'KeefeStore.com and help fund our journalism. You can buy all this stuff. We have, the, we have the best stuff. It's terrific. It's unbelievable. We have the best cameras. Best cameras. OMG Undercover. OMG Thanks, Lou. OMG on O'Keefe Store work, or is it just that one? O'Keefe Store is merch. O'Keefe Store is merch. The cameras are OMG Undercover. You can buy these, support our work, pay our help me make payroll for my team. That's omgundercover.com. Let's go back to the people. Let's go to, this is where you guys have these bizarre names. Zadok. Zadok, you're live with James O'Keefe. Go ahead. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you. God I... is with the righteous. We need to defeat Zionism, save humanity. Thank okay, you. Th let's go to Lori. Lori, you're on the inside with James O'Keefe. No fragility. Go ahead. Lori, let's go to Lori. You're on the inside with James O'Keefe. Go ahead. Hi, James O'Keefe. Thanks so much for everything that you do. I've been a longtime fan. I want to let you know that the thing that you said over and over tonight that resonated with me and many other parents is about fear and overcoming that fear. And even if you think that you are locally recognizable, you can still make a difference. And, I, and I, I'm going to share that with all my parents, and I just want to thank you for the space. Thank you very much. Let's go to Philip. You're live. Unmute yourself. Thank you, James. Thanks for your work. Um, like you said, we all need to be investigative journalists. You don't have to have the badge to do it. Just take a stand. Think about your children. Think about our country. Just question everything. Put pressure on people. Just question everything and try and wake up as many people as possible to what you know. Even if it's wrong, just spread knowledge, you know, Tell everybody, question everything. The more pressure we put on these people, the more people will wake up and recognize what's really going on in our country. Again, thank you for everything you're doing. And it's not just for what you're doing, you're awakening the masses. It, it, it's like a kickstand for a motorcycle. You're, you're, you're enabling us. Thank you, James. Thank you for the comment. Marauder, go ahead, you're live. Unmute yourself. Hey, James. Hey, Jack. Hey, Jim. Hey, Mona. Hey, everybody. Uh, I got a quick question. Obviously, the White House is going to deny any wrongdoing whatsoever, but I want to know what you guys think they're going to blame it on. What are they going to blame it on? I don't know. I don't know how to answer that. I think the reaction is going to be interesting. What happens to this man? Usually, if someone is terminated, that's newsworthy. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Um, 
Hey, I wanted to see if I could get a quick question in. Uh, Christy Lee here, former news anchor. I'm inspired by what I saw you do, and I'm blown away that you just did the Clark Kent, and he didn't realize who you were. But um, I had that same thought about, you know, recognizability. So I want to know about the process here. Do you recommend um, if you go and try and do this kind of journalism, uh-huh. are you actually signing up on, like, dating sites and, and finding these people through through these these dating sites? Like, how is the process to get yourself in these Yeah, we, we do this. We have a whole vertical within OMG. Um, and I'm glad. Good, great question. You can actually do this. We are in the bottom lower third of the video. If you watch this video, you'll see an advertisement for sign up to become an American swiper. That we're calling it the American Swiper Program. You're swiping on these different apps to meet folks. O'Keefe Media Group uh, dot com slash swiper, and you can sign up to do that. We have a whole master class, a seminar dedicated to it. And in fact, one of our citizen journalists did the whole uh, Chinese bio lab story in California. So. I thought, what, what better way um, to inspire people to sign up, Christy, than to go ahead and do it myself. I'm not going to ask anybody to do anything that I'm not willing to do. And it would prevent the mix. How about you, Christy? Why don't you sign up to become an American swiper? What do you say? Well, I, I mean, obviously, I'm asking the question. I'm intrigued. So, so like I said, I mean, this isn't, isn't, isn't my toolbox. I mean, I'm a former propaganda puppet, if you will. I was in the mainstream legacy media for many years. I've been independent for a couple years, so I'm still learning, you know, the- What did you work for? Take from. What did you work? I worked for, uh, I was a news anchor in Ohio, and then I went to California and worked for a Fox station. How were you a propaganda pundit? No, I said I was. I was How a were you a propaganda pundit? Just, just by being in the system. When I realized how it was working, that's when I got out. Wow. Well, I'd like to have you as an American swiper. You can go to that O'Keefe Media Group dot com slash swiper. We'll pay you five thousand bucks to go do one of these stories if we publish it on X and you get the story. Keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, everyone thinks the story is it's like journalism is not what you say. It's what the subject says. It's not your opinion. It's what their admission is. Very difficult to obtain, but becoming easier with technology like this. All right. Who else we got? Uh, live on the inside with James O'Keefe. Let's see. I'm going to request some people. Raise your hand if you want to comment. We still have another five or ten minutes left. Um, let's go to let's go to Holly. Holly Williams. Go ahead. Hi, James. Courage is contagious, so thank you for leading. Um, I wanted to know, what is your methodology for determining when you've extracted all possible intel from your source, or also known as when are they burned? When are they burned? Well, that's really sometimes something you can control and sometimes you can't. Tomorrow, we're going to be releasing the full interaction with the subject here, the cybersecurity official. As I said, I'm James O'Keefe. And he goes into immediate Potemkin mode. He goes, he starts creating this, the, the, the towing the line, he gives me, well, we have great cybersecurity. I said, well, obviously you don't. And I made the decision at that moment to reveal myself. And that's a tough call. You have to um, uh, make that decision sometimes live. There's no script or safety net doing this sort of investigative reporting. You're out there on the frontier and you're out there quite literally alone. You don't have any earbud in your head. There's no van outside. You need to know the story when you're sitting there, and you need to make the decision while you're sitting in front of the subject, do I go, do I tell them who I am right now, or do I, or do I walk out? Now, usually if it's not me, you'll be going to the bathroom, and then I'll be coming in and confronting him. Good question. Let's go to Luke Skywalker. You're live on the inside with James O'Keefe. Go ahead. Hey, James. Uh, last Thursday in front of my Audra and I were doing a homeless count here in San Diego, and... Uh, we happened to stumble upon a church of the Nazarene that was uh, that was uh, basically, a, I guess, working with an NGO to bring in the illegal immigrants. And I had sent you an email about it. It's also on my timeline, but I could send you, it to you again. We made a video. It turned out really good. It went over pretty well. Um, but it was us doing some on the ground, catching it at 6 o'clock in the morning, reporting, watching it move the migrants into a school, onto a bus, and off to who knows where. We got a 10 minute video, you should check it out. Check it out, check it out. You can click on his page. Let's go to Real Queen 
queen girl, real queen, you're live on the inside with James O'Keefe. Unmute yourself and you got 30 seconds. Yes, sir. I just want to say, I've always told people the corruption under the Biden regime runs deep. Now, most of these people are criminals, pedophiles, and it's interesting how many of them will break their oaths to office, commit treason because of these promises and stuff. And if we could get in on the inside of Israel, we would find it off the pedophilia and the criminal stuff is deep there, not just the Vatican. So salute to you once again. And where would I go to donate to OMG Media? It's right there in the video, O'KeefeMediaGroup.com backslash donate. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and try to call Charlie Crager. We're trying to identify his phone number here. Um, I'm gonna call him live on the air. Let's call him for comment. Well, you already, I already got his comment. Call him for another comment, perhaps. My team will, let's see if he picks up the phone. This will be interesting. We're live in front of a million people. Call on the cybersecurity guy at the White House. Is this his number? Okay, we have the correct number. Let's see if this works. Come on, Charlie. Sometimes I double call. I double call to get the comment. Let's call him again. Double call. Journalism 101. I thought I'd give it a shot. All right, he's not picking up. We still have a few more minutes, and I want to I want to end with Nick Shirley. Before I do, let's go to um, I don't I don't. Where do you come up with these names? But Bon Three Smama. Go ahead, you're live. Go ahead. Unmute yourself if you can hear me. Bonds Three Mama. Go yeah. ahead. It's, it's Bones Mama. I don't know My where you guys is. come up with these crazy. What's your What's your actual I, name? I, my son got a nickname when he was young and it's what, what I want to know what your name is. What's your name? Christina. Thank you, Christina. Go ahead. You're welcome. Um, I just had a question. What do we do to stop watching? Like, wh who do we call? There's like, what, 15,000 people here right now? What if, who do we call? 15,000 people calling or emailing. How do we make it stop? How do you stop what? The corruption. You stop, you stop the corruption by exposing the corruption. You stop the corruption, you, you, the sunlight will disinfect it. You have to be the sunlight. You have to go out and do the work. I don't need 15,000 people to do it. I actually just need one person to do it. Can we start with one? How about one? How about three? Either Christina, can we get three people to do it? How about five? What's, 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 15, what's five and 15,000? A hell of a lot less than 0.1 percent. So let's start with let's start with let's start with just a couple people. Who do we call? Who do we? You don't. There's no don't don't call no calling. You're gonna go out in the field. You're gonna take a hidden camera. You're gonna go to go to our swiper program, and you're gonna start doing this work. That's what you're gonna start doing. Now maybe not you, Christina, but if we just all upload videos of people doing crime and nobody. You broke up there. Say that again. I said, if we just all record people that are continually to commit crimes, that's no that's how you change. That's exactly what's going to change the world. You bet, because it's either that or civil war, and I don't believe in violence, and I don't like violence. It's either your political coercion, in other words, forcing other people to 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 submit to your will, or it's informing the people and creating some type of moral consensus. So absolutely uh, uploading videos of people committing crimes will change the world. And if that doesn't work, there is 0% chance to avoid civil war. But I believe that we can avoid that and we can avoid civil unrest by the truth. So we don't need 15,000 people to do it. We just need, let's start with a few. Let's start with one. How about that? Can we start with one? We just need one. One man with courage makes a majority. Um, we're, we're ending our program, but we're gonna go to Miss S. Silence D. Better. What is your actual first name, ma'am? My name's Trina. 
Well, I'm just going to call you Trina. Trina, okay. you've got 30 seconds. Go ahead. Thank you, James. I have completed your master class, and I would just like to tell everybody to go to your American Swiper um, course. And, I mean, the legal questions, the how to start, um, what things you need to consider. He goes over all of these things. And um, I just want to thank you for taking on this monster of evil, even when they're, you know, banging down your door and taking your personal notes and, um, and showing us how to do these things, how to come together, because it is um, the people. We just don't realize our power yet. And um, so I, I'm just really grateful. I lost my train of thought. No, thank you. Thank you. Um, you can buy the master class. I'm, I'm, there's a lot. Of, our website, O'KeefeMediaGroup.com. It's O'KeefeMediaGroup.com backslash O'Keefe hyphen academy. If you want the class, if you want the hidden cameras, it's omgundercover.com. And if you want to support us, the great wellness company, as I mentioned earlier, it takes a lot of money to do this kind of work. And I wanted to thank the wellness company for being a great OMG supporter and offering us a 50% discount on their medical kit. I'm taking ivermectin because I still have a raspy voice from a cold, but I don't take days off. You can do that by going to twc.health slash OMG. A huge thanks to the wellness company for supporting us. And finally, our friend Nick. No, 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 before we get to Nick, we got April and then Nick. April, Dawn, go ahead. You're live on the inside with James O'Keefe. You have 30 seconds, go. Hi, James. Hi, Mario. Hi, everyone. Um, I know you've probably noticed some of the uh, things I've been pounding into your space's comments. And I think there, I, I love journalism. My son's going into journalism in college, and I appreciate journalism. I truly do. I just, I really hope that... Um, this continuance of just wielding everyone wielding their cocks around is really kind of disgusting because to get to the truth, like to really bring our country to the truth, it absolutely has to come from the heart. And I, I know that you feel that this is the only way, but please make sure that you are instilling some integrity into journalism. I do not want journalism to end up like America has all broken and shattered because of uh, lack of heart, lack of thinking, lack of conscientious objection. Please, please. I love you, Mario. I love all, you, all of your um, posts. Thank you for the comment. Uh, and then finally, we're going to Nick Shirley. Nick, are you there? Yes, I am here. <laughs> Nick, thank you for, for your patience, my friend. Um, uh, Nick, you know, we've been talking about fear. Well, first, what's your reaction to this video? And then we'll go to the border where you saw the cartel guy through the fence. Well, I thought your, your video was amazing. I mean, most people these days, they won't talk to you. And so what you did was a perfect and he spilled everything, which is hard to get. So, you've been, respect it. <laughs> you've been talking to kind of illegal immigrants and migrants at the border, and they've been confessing things to you, and you are one of the few people that are actually doing something along with Anthony and his brother at Muckraker. I mean, what is the secret to the courage? Because I, I want you to kind of answer the questions that I've been receiving about what do we do? Like, there's 15,000 people here that want to do something. So, like, what do you, what do you have to say to, to, to them uh, when they ask us that question? Well, when you, when you believe in something, you know something's true, there should be nothing that stops you from doing it, right? If you really believe in it, you have to do it. Because if it's not you, no one else will do it. You know what I mean? If it's not you, nobody else will do it. Is that what motivated you to do what you do? Or what did motivate you to... For those of you listening, this is Nick. He's been breaking some massive stories on YouTube. He, like, puts on a reflecting vest and, like, runs into the... Like secret migrant facilities. He was just at the border with the cartel. W what motivated you to do the thing? I just want people to realize what's going on, they, especially with the border, because, I mean, they need to close the border for the Americans, and on top of that, they need to close the border for these migrants that are coming here to America. There's too many people that are being 
kidnapped, raped, murdered across this journey to get to the United States, and they need to close the border, one for the American and then two for the migrant, um, because there's too many people. You were about to interview a cartel member to walk us through what happened in that moment. This is in the video when you're, you're in, why, why is your mom with you in the car? Did she drive you there? Is she your co-host? My, mom, my mom's also a reporter. Oh, your mom's a reporter. She runs her own account. She, 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 yeah, she does TikTok. She has over 70,000 followers. That was the damnedest does. thing I've ever seen. Like, your mom's in the car. You're about, <laughs> you're about to interview a cartel member when your mom objected. Take us to what happened there. Yeah, so the, uh, in Jacumba, California, the cartel just runs free there. And I was going to run over and start talking. One, one of the cartel members yelled at me, and I was going to go over and and try to talk to him, and my mom, I got in the car to go drive over there, my mom freaked out, had a panic attack, and she, she told me, hell no, you ain't going over there. She so just told you not to go. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I'm with my mom, so I'm not going to risk her life, right? I, I was right. willing to risk mine, but I'm not going to. Were you going to, I mean, when you say the cartel, what are you going to do, go to the fence and stick out your microphone to the fence with the cartel? Yeah, I was going to go over and stick out my microphone and talk to him in Spanish, and uh, see what was happening. What did the cartel scream at you through the fence? Uh, what's up, bro? How's it going, boss? <laughs> How did you know they were the cartel? The, the cartels are the ones that are dropping everyone off in oh. the caravans. And they're all masked up. And Is yeah, it they, true that they're they're getting, it's about 10000 per body down at the border? Yeah. Every person that comes to the border, they're paying at least ten grand, ten grand a body. So the cartel is making millions of dollars off what's going on. Well, I look forward to seeing you soon. I'm not going to tell the world what we're going to do together, but I, 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 I find that as far as hiring goes and recruiting, that the best people to hire or to work with are the people who already do the thing and without you asking them to. And Nick is one of those people. And I look forward to, to, to meeting you and working with you. And courage is the virtue that sustains all others. Uh, anything else you'd like to say, Nick, before we close the show? Um, just I've, I've been uploading these videos also on X. I just realized I could do that, so go check those out. Um, and great work what you're doing, James. I'm excited to meet you. All right. And, uh, well, everyone, um, that concludes. Uh, thank you so much for joining us for On the Inside every Wednesday, as promised, 4 o'clock Eastern to 6 o'clock Eastern time. We go live. We break a big story every week. That's what we're doing in 2020. Every single Wednesday, we break another investigation. It took us four days to produce this piece. We got a big story coming next Wednesday. <coughs> Excuse me. I've got a cold. I'm taking my ivermectin thing <coughs> to the wellness company. I've never done that before. You want to be a swiper? O'KeefeMediaGroup.com slash swiper. You want to buy the hidden cameras to support us? That's OMGUndercover.com. And stay tuned. We're going to get a comment from the White House, and tomorrow we're going to break the full interaction when I take off my glasses and I say, I got one more question. What are you doing? What's a cybersecurity official inside the White House doing? Sitting across the table from James O'Keefe. You're not going to want to miss the full interaction. Unbelievable. Until next time.